Well, here we are. Episode 125 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio is set to go. And today, it's all about sparring drills. We're going to talk about some of my favorites and even give you ideas on how to develop your own new drills. But first, let me introduce myself. I'm Whistlekick's founder, but I'm better known as your host for the show, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistlekick, I am proud to say, makes the absolute best martial arts sparring gear, apparel, and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome all the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back. All of our past episodes, show notes, and a bunch more are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I hope you do, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests. On every episode, we mention a particular product in the hopes we can slowly introduce you to our full line. We hope these minimal commercials aren't too intrusive. And honestly, I don't know of any podcast that have as little commercial time as this show. I listen to quite a few. It's usually five to 10 minutes across an hour. We have maybe 20 seconds. I'm actually starting to go long. So with that, today, there's no particular product. I just hope you'll consider supporting us through a purchase at some point, somewhere along the line, when something we offer meets your needs or your wants. Whistlekick.com is the place to go for everything we have. Sparring is about as integral to martial arts as you get, but a lot of schools I visit have been training their sparring in the same way, with the same drills, or (gasps) gasp, even no drills, for a long time. I've learned a lot of fun, effective sparring drills over the years, and they've made me a better fighter. While we don't have time for them all here, let's talk about sparring drills, what they can offer, and how you can implement them. Since some of you don't have a lot of say in what goes on in your class training, I'll even give you some drills you can practice on your own. Sparring drills at the 800-foot sort of view fall into one of two categories. Drills you can practice by yourself and drills you can practice with other people. While the drills you do with other people will always be more realistic since you have the element of another person or people, they're not always the easiest way to get better at a particular element of your sparring. You don't start learning to kick through sparring, nor should all of your skills be developed in that way. Sparring can be intense, even if it's controlled and in the safety of your school with people you trust, there's a bit of anxiety that shows up for most people. That anxiety comes from dealing with the unknown. Your partner could throw nearly anything, and that fact is frightening to many people. All partner sparring drills can be broken into four key areas. Timing, accuracy, diversity, and flow. Let's talk about what each of the four mean and give you some examples. Timing drills include a lot of old favorites that you've likely done. Practicing striking or blocking from a relaxed state, as an example. That drill is often implemented with people holding their hands at their sides and someone will flinch and another person will react, or perhaps the instructor will call something out and the attacker has to strike and the defender has to defend. There's a thousand and one ways to slice that. Really, any drill where you need to coordinate your movements to a partner, where there's a certain window of time to execute the technique properly, falls into this category. These drills are often done slowly to start and add speed based on the skill and comfort of participants. Accuracy drills focus on, uh, get it? See, I made a joke, on performing the right movement or a movement at the right location. Ever practice your kicks on a live person that was standing still so you could hit them or not quite hit them? That's an accuracy drill. You're working towards not hitting them full force, maybe making some light contact or focusing on a specific area. Other drills could involve tying a particular block to a strike, such that every time an attacker throws a low front kick, you have to throw a downward block. Diversity drills are my favorite category because they're the ones that seem to be most ignored. Have you ever noticed that most people fall into patterns with their sparring? They throw the same few movements in the same ways with the same stances and the same timing. Ugh, a good fighter picks up on those cues very quickly. Even a moderately paced sparring match is a difficult place to practice new movements or really just kind of shifting that around. And that's where diversity drills come in. 
practicing just offense, just defense, or only using the left side of your body. These are examples of diversity drills. Once you take away the goal of winning the match, it allows the participants to work on diversifying their arsenal. My absolute favorite sparring drill is actually my favorite sparring drill of all time, and it falls under this category. And it's called, very simply, slow sparring. Some schools have variations of slow sparring, but I see few of them implement it in the way I mean it. With slow sparring the way I like it, there's almost never a successful attack because the participants are moving that slowly. In fact, when I teach this drill, I tell people that if they're able to hit their partner, they're going too fast. This drill is absolute magic when it comes to giving people the space and the comfort to try new things. It isn't physically taxing, nor is there much risk of injury, so you can take off your sparring gear. I know, I know, the founder of the sparring gear company is telling you to take off your gear. Maybe strange, but trust me, it's worth it. And that should underscore how important I think this drill is. I've seen people make a tremendous amount of progress in just a few hours of working this drill. And our last category, flow drills. And these are all about motion, not stopping your movement to think or react. One of the most popular flow drills is called sticky hands, and I bet a lot of you have done some variation of it. When I looked on YouTube to find a video of sticky hands, I was blown away at the number and the differences between the versions. We've added one of those videos to the show notes, but I'd encourage you to check out the different ways of implementing sticky hands on YouTube. I bet you'll find at least a few different ideas you can try. So those are the four different kinds of partner drills. Of course, there are ways to combine them, ways to focus on certain elements, and that's really how all drills come about, an effort to work on a particular element. When it comes to sparring drills, we're trying to find ways to improve some part of our sparring. Individual drills fall into the same four categories, timing, accuracy, diversity, and flow. Of course, there are pros and cons to addressing these in both the partner and the solo situation. Working on timing by yourself might seem counterintuitive, but you can do it. There are random timer apps out there you can use on your phone or tablet that generate a noise and you can take whatever action at that time. Maybe it's not the best way to handle timing, but it's an option. And really, if you don't have the opportunity to use a person, then you know, you're pretty much stuck to things like that. Accuracy is an easy category to work on by yourself. Put a piece of tape on a wall and perform techniques on it. If you have a heavy bag or a wave bag, you can put colored tape on it. If you want to get really fancy, you can record yourself saying color sequences, saving them individually, then playing a whole playlist of them back randomly. Sort of like playing Twister, but by yourself and with martial arts. And in fact, something that isn't even written into the show notes that I just remembered, Master Simon Sher, who was on the show, has a great social media presence. And he did a video of him using a Simon game. And of course, it's fun because it's play on words. It's his first name. But if you remember those games, and younger crowd may not, there were four colors, red, yellow, blue, and green, and it would light up in a random order and you had to memorize it and, and tap the buttons back in the correct order. He's hanging one on the wall and playing Simon with kicks. So it comes up and it says, you know, blue, yellow, and he has to round kick the blue and then the yellow. And it's working on accuracy. It's working on uh, timing to a certain degree. There's a mental component with the memorization. It looks like a lot of fun. And actually, now that I'm saying that, we'll get a video and we'll link that over in the show notes. Diversity is a great thing to work on by yourself. Something as simple as shadow boxing. Shadow boxing can be done with any number of restrictions or focus points. Try only kicking, only striking, or forcing yourself to throw a certain number of techniques with each set. I like to encourage people to throw at least three things at a time, as that number really seems to help their sparring tremendously. Flow can also be handled with shadow boxing. Try working on your footwork while punching and kicking. Put yourself in a small square on the floor and just go, just move, keep throwing, or maybe stand facing a corner. 
If you want to really mix it up, go into a dense forest and move around the trees, striking for 30 seconds of, at a time. Lots of options. In my time teaching, I've come with, with a lot of sparring drills, and some of them work great. Some of them were complete flops. In every case, I've worked backwards from the goal. Sure, putting together a drill is fun, or at least it can be, especially if it's something new that people enjoy doing. But you should always know the end goal. There may be exceptions, but the participants in the drills should know the end goal too. Let's come up with one right now. If someone is already doing this, my apologies. I'm not trying to steal any ideas or say this is unique. It's just something I haven't seen done. So let's come up with a drill to stop people from backing away from their opponent. We've all seen that, right? Most of us do it. An attack comes in and the instinct is to go to the safest place possible, which is the farthest from that technique. But we know that that doesn't always help us, so we want to improve the reaction and shift to something else. This drill will require at least four people. And at the start, it should be only four. Two pairs, each designated with an attacker and a defender. The two defenders stand back to back, making contact. The attackers start attacking slowly, and the defenders have to defend. They don't get to counter, at least not at the start. But through it all, they have to maintain contact with the other defender. This will force them to move side to side to handle the attacks, but they can't back up because there's a person there, right? As an added bonus, it's going to force them to read the body language of the person behind them. They can't move in different directions. They have to stay connected. Now, if you choose, you can allow the defenders to communicate with each other verbally, which adds another wonderful benefit. Is that a good drill? I have no idea. I just made it up. It could be great. It could be a flop. But hopefully you see my thought process. I started by finding something I wanted to change, thought of a way to stop that behavior, or you could find a way to encourage alternative behavior. In this case, we chose stopping and built a framework around that concept, making it an engaging and enjoyable drill. Or like I said, hopefully. I think I'm going to have to try that more than I'm thinking about it. I like it. I bet every person listening has at least a few drills they love that we could talk about. One of my earliest martial arts projects was in 2002. I had just opened my school and I was trying to design a random martial arts class generator. Talk about a nerd, right? I was building a computer program that would put together a syllabus for the class and tell me what I was going to do. Of course, from there, once I had that programming done, I had to build a library of drills. And I was never able to make the class generator work in a way I liked. So I didn't build the library of drills, but I've seen similar ones online. And if you would be so kind, please head on over to the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. This is episode 125. And add your favorite drill or drills to the comments. Give you bonus points if you link to a video. If that's not your way of engaging with us, how about social media? Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and YouTube. You can just search Whistlekick. If you want to be a guest on the show, or maybe you have an idea for a topic, go ahead, please fill out the form on the website. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. Don't forget we've got apps for iOS and Android. And don't forget, we love reviews, iTunes, Stitcher, or throw something up on your blog and give us a link to it. We'd love to see what you think about what we're doing. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.